Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. Got something special for you today. A three in one location. Not every day you get to film, look at, explore, document three similar locations, items in the same location, if that makes sense. What I'm talking about today is none other than these three bridges. Behind me there is a covered bridge, which is an active road bridge. Next to that is an active rail line. And behind me here, with that individual climbing out of the woods, is an abandoned train bridge. And yes, that is Jake, Mr. Smithnet. You guys remember him? Of course, him and RJ, their links will be linked down below like usual. But we're here to basically document this because it's a pretty amazing location that all three bridges here are different but similar and active and abandoned. It's a really cool spot. I've seen pictures of it. I know other people have been here, and as we're making our way through, which you probably have already seen some of it, I am going to be flying the drone to get some drone footage as well. So if you want to check out these three bridges, well, you know what to do. Just come along with me. So this is located in the town of Katowice, which is just outside of Elysburg and Buckhorn, Bloomsburg area. And although I've driven past this area hundreds of times, I'd never ventured off the main road to see these here or to know that they were so close by on my travels to Knobles and other areas. So this is the active line here. It is, looks like it's freshly posted. Actually looks like they were just put these signs in maybe in the last couple weeks. So obviously we're not going to cross this bridge here because of obvious reasons, but with the drone though, we could obviously make our way down the rails, pretend we're crossing it. You can make yourself a, be an imaginary train or a pilot or whatever you want to do, but the footage will look pretty good as we're crossing it with the drone. This is called the Rupert Bridge number 56. The good thing is that there is a little placard here with some information about it. It is an active bridge. Cars are coming and going here pretty much nonstop, so we do need to be careful, but we will take a closer look at that. And through the woods here is an active, sorry, abandoned train bridge. It's for the former Catawissa Line. The Catawissa line may sound familiar to some of you because I actually did a video on the abandoned Schumann Tunnel. Myself, RJ, and Ellen did that video. That's part of the same line, the Catawissa line. So this one, I won't be crossing because as you'll see, there's no rails, no ties, just the beams of the bridge itself. RJ may cross it. If so, you'll get the footage on his video. But I will do what I can with the drone to give you some better views of it. So let's start over there and then we'll work our way over to there. So this will be the second covered bridge I'm filming. I did one with RJ over the winter time and all the way I plan to do more. This one just happens to be at this location. So let's check out the placard here. It says Rupert Covered Bridge. Columbia County Commissions has the names of the project coordinator. Um, let's see, year built. 1847 wow that is old rehabilitated 2000 so 21 years ago they did a rebuilt refurbishment on it property has been placed on the national register of historic places which is awesome by the united states department of the interior so this is pretty historical this has been around a long time over 150 years Clearance 9.6 inches, so obviously it's not going to be for any oversized vehicles or tractor trailers. I'm sure there's a weight limit too. But as we make our way inside though, the roof looks in really good shape. Looks like that was probably part of the rehabilitating. The beams are pretty massive and thick. And the flooring is, you know, a wooden floor, wooden road. Now, whenever I see these covered bridges, the thing that comes to mind is from the movie Funny Farm with Chevy Chase, where he's waiting for his furniture delivery, and they're in this big box truck, and they go across this old covered bridge, and when they get on it, it starts shaking, falling apart, and the guy yells, this is not a bridge, this is termites holding hands. That always comes to mind. Now, just to show you the scale here, I mean, my hand, compared to that, that is, I would say maybe... 15 inches in length here. I do hear 
thought there was a car coming. So I know it's a little dark in here. You could see the big curve right there too, which looks pretty neat. It's like a big golden arch <laughs> McDonald's. Uh, obviously on this side, this one too. I'm not gonna spend too much time in here, obviously, because it is active. So I'm just gonna give you a brief walk through here. But it is really cool though. I mean, just to be around so long, I didn't know it was that old. I was expecting early 1900s, but it is protected. They did do a rehabilitation on it. So it's gonna be around for a long time to come. Hope there's no cars coming. Oh, and there's a car coming. All right, guys, move over. I don't want to get hit. So on the other side here, which I'll show you in just a moment, it does say Rupert Bridge number 56 as well. Fortunately, there's some graffiti here and there. And the good thing is once we come out of here, we can actually walk under the active train line and get to the other side of the abandoned train bridge, but we'll wait for this next vehicle to come through. I actually thought that was RJ. There's Jake over there getting his shots. And yeah, we're gonna venture down that way under the active line and see what it looks like from over there. And if I do take any photos, I will be sharing them at some point with a little mini photo montage. Another area we discovered just below the other side of the bridge here is an information plaque with some more information. I'm gonna briefly go over it. If you wanna pause anything, you're welcome to. It shows a picture of the bridge in really poor condition. It says this was a survival of several major floods, including the major one in 72, Tropical Storm Agnes, also known as Hurricane Agnes. And there was numerous automobile accidents on the interior. It says there was an ice jam that caused damage. And it was actually shut down from 94 to 2001 for over six years it was closed. They did the rehabilitation in 2000 and it is open to the public again for travel. To go over here, there's some older photos saying a popular route for travelers. Uh, does it cost $1,637 back in 1847? And it is located in the village of Rupert, named after Leonard Rupert, who was established a ferry across the river in his home. And his home became a popular stopping place for travelers. And it has information about what keeps the bridge standing. And this stands a length of 185 feet and 4 inches. They had a keep those four inches on there and there's an old photo from a newspaper advertising the bridge September 19th to the 27th see Pennsylvania's covered bridges there's a truss burr bridge showing the construction design and the length again 185 feet four inches and if you want more information it says let the river be your guide Susquehanna greenway.org well Jake's got the magic eye he spotted a nice patch of nature's carpet and i see there's a little pathway here too so yeah let's check this out before we continue on it's probably a fishing spot for locals here and we came the right time of year looks like the bamboo and everything's starting to bloom and grow I'll tell you what the pillars the supports look practically brand new It's actually a nice area down here. Water looks crystal clear too. It's a little muddy down here. You can tell this does go underwater, but I'm gonna make my way safely. Okay, and down here on the bank side, which is actually a great vantage point here. So I'm gonna show you. Ooh, just spotted a couple things. I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing here. It's actually an old hornet's nest right there. But uh, behind that is the old original abutment, looks like. And you can see where they did do some rehabilitating with some newer, more modern stone and concrete patch. Looking across though, it's a great view, but look at those supports. They look like they were installed yesterday. Clean, you know, well-constructed, brand new. 
Same thing on the other side. You can tell where there's a newer section and older section. And looking to my right here is the active line. And it's a combination of like a, almost like a trestle and girder bridge. But down here though, the, the uh, underwater area is like, it looks like bedrock. There's like some rock going down. It looks like it's pretty deep right there. Wouldn't be a terrible swimming hole. I can imagine locals do come here to cool off. And there's looking across to the abandoned bridge there. If I do find any information as to when the line was last used, I do have some information based on the Schumann Tunnel video. Uh, if I don't find anything new or additional, I will add that on the screen. But there may be some more information out there possibly. But since I'm down here, I'm going to snap a few photos for you guys. And then we're going to get back up on the surface and continue over there. Just spotted something right here. This concrete support here looks like it was a post for something. Could have been a signal or a marker, but it's just laying here on the embankment of the active line. As you can hear, it is an active area with vehicles. And now looking ahead, this is the abandoned line. Now it's no surprise that the rails are gone because the Schumann tunnel that I did had no rails. The rails were ripped up. It's more or less just ATV trails and stuff like that. So the only thing that's left here is just the actual frame itself. But it's still holding strong. But we're going to try to make our way up here and get some topside views, backside views of the abandoned bridge itself. But it's neat though. It's actually a nice little pebble beach that you guys are sitting on. At least now with the water level low enough and some great vantage points to my right your left is the abandoned bridge active bridge and the covered bridge and it's all river pebbles here so i think we need to do one thing you know what that is do a little rock skipping okay we got some perfect stones here let's let's see if we can make this go ready there we go we got a little Hop, skip, and a jump. Let's try another one. Here, a nice flat one. These are like perfect. Let's try one more here. There's a little bunny hop. I'll set you guys down, do a little time lapse here of us having some fun skipping some stones. Oh, gotta jump off the log.
Yeah, we made it out to the middle pier. Good job, guys. <laughs> and looking into the water here, it's actually pretty deep. You can see some fallen logs and stuff like that. There is a nice little pocket of water, though, but RJ was out a good way on that before, so you guys will see his video from looking down, but now we're looking up. And if we throw in some drone footage, we can see a very overhead view looking down from high above. It's a really nice area though. I actually like it. It's quiet. It's semi-remote, but still close enough to civilization and everyday life. But also it allows you to come here and do some fishing, probably swimming. If you're lucky at the right time of day or month or year, catch some train activity as well. And uh, looking upstream, it's just more natural beauty. So RJ is being gracious enough to walk out again so we could get some views from top and bottom. Although it's not going anywhere, I just have uh, a little fear with being able to see right through to the bottom. That's my hesitation with doing it myself. That makes for some good footage though to see him up there and some good photos as well. Hopefully there's no trains coming. He's got nowhere to go. Can you imagine how many people have sat here and where they did, this, did some fishing or had some lunch or young teens making out or whatever, but it's a nice area down here. I can see why it's, you know, looks like it's well used, but not too bad as far as vandalism or graffiti. Some mild things here and there, but it could be much worse, but I like it. Okay, so now we need to get topside and give you some upper area views of the abandoned bridge here. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video because we have more locations to do today, which you will see in separate videos. So let me get my uh, self down. And uh, I'm gonna get a head start. You guys catch up. I'll see you at the top. All right, we're gonna climb these massive stone steps here okay we're almost at the top let's get all the way up there and get a nice clear shot through the middle it's been a long long time since any trains have passed through here and nature is slowly reclaiming it got trees growing up from underneath some of the beams are getting covered in a little light coating of nature's carpet and moss and stuff like that. You can tell there was fencing here at one point covering this, but it's been down here for a while. It's all rusty and no longer serving its purpose. And I'm fairly confident that people cross this on a regular basis, whether for the thrill of it or just to test their limits. But I know my limits and I'm not going out there. RJ did it. Which he's doing again, which makes me nervous. And <laughs> he does it on purpose. So a lucky find here. Both myself and RJ found it. Builder's plate here, built by Coid. Or no, actually it's broken off. Something Coid Iron Works. Something GE and Construction. Schneider Chief, probably engineer. And then 1889. So this is a... Uh, much newer than the covered bridge, but still pretty old itself, well over 100 years. It's funny that RJ just mentioned something that I was thinking in the back of my mind is that this would be great to repurpose. He says road bridge, I said as a pedestrian bridge, almost like a rail trail because you can't cross the active line and it's dangerous to walk through the covered bridge. This would be a great alternative to cross over, you know, replank both bridges here and, you know, have an area for picnics or trails or whatever else but who knows what the future holds but now let's go check out where Jake is here for the other little bridge which is also not planked but if I had to cross the two it would definitely be this one. Oh yeah there is rail here didn't even see that there's rail and there's some ties here too 
There's some ties still in place. I wonder if we can find a date on the rail. If we could find an exposed area. There's rail on both sides, actually. So this one has been dislodged. This one's still in place, actually, but it's moved to the side. It doesn't line up with the bridge. Nineteen thirty-seven. Here we go. Yep. Probably has the builder stamp further down, but yeah, right here. Yep. We at least have a date though. Nineteen thirty-seven. Steelton. Steelton. Beth Steelton, I bet. That's yeah. the same one I did recently. Beth Steelton, 1937. Awesome. Guys, I've always said it before. I'll say it again. It always helps to do these things with friends and to have multiple sets of eyes. You never know what you'll miss or what you'll actually see. This, uh, okay, so we're in the, somebody drives down the road here, going to think we're crazy. We're staying at the edge of the bridge here. Standing right here, there's the main road. And you can see 11 foot three, completely open. But the line would have went straight across. And I don't know how far it would have continued. Maybe in a future date, may do a exploration, seeing what's left of it down there. And like he said, I've said, don't do as he's doing. Let us do it, or more specifically him. This is as close as I'm getting, no further. Looking up here is a nice view of some ferns popping out of the stonework. There's the abandoned section above us. You can tell this is a, forming like a wind tunnel. It's a steady breeze blowing through here. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I want to thank you for joining myself, RJ, and Jake, Mr. Smithnet, as we explored and documented these three bridges here in Catawissa. If you do come here for yourself to check them out, just be cautious. It is a very busy road here. There's cars constantly coming and going. Obviously through the covered bridge, you know, I wouldn't linger in there too long, but it is, you know, passable. Same thing with the active bridge. Be respectful of the active line. Don't walk on the line, in the line. The train is a coming. Definitely give it some space. The active line there, you can certainly get some shots of. If you want to be courageous like RJ, that is on your own well doing the best way to see it like i did is through the drone with that said if you have any questions feel free to share them down below i always look forward to hearing your feedback and comments and lastly i'm going to get my butt out of here because there's a lot of cars and we have more locations to go to so thanks so much for watching and as always i'll see you 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 back there you down in front in the next video